Welcome, welcome everybody to Outcomes of Sun Radio. I'm Marielle Hemingway. I'm here with my co-host, Melissa Yamaguchi. Hello, my friend. Hello, Hi. hello. How are you this fine day? You know what? I'm fantastic. It's a beautiful <laughs> summer day and I'm loving life, you know? Well, we get the sun here in Southern California when we had a whole month of June gloom that spilled into the 1st of July. So I'm glad to have the sun out. I don't think we, I don't, I mean, I'm not a big, for those of you who are not viewing this, you don't know, but I'm a very pale girl. I do not entertain sunburns or because I will burn. I don't stay out in the sun a lot, but boy, I should do benefit. First, the, the, the first 30 minutes of my waking up out in the sun, getting it all in, taking in as much as I can. So I'm appreciative of this sun. Well, that's the key to why your skin looks amazing. <laughs> Let's see. So did so did Dracula's. Just stay in the coffin and only come out at night. Hey, I've got. I I want to talk to you about some stuff that's going on. What's there's, going on? There's. So we have some pressure that goes on some of our youth in sports, right? And oh. there's this incredible pressure to kind of keep up. And right. just just today, and I don't want to throw names into the ring at all out of respect for everyone's family. But we have this young up and coming athlete who's in college now, young age of 18, who suffered cardiac arrest this morning. And this is a healthy kid. This is not someone who's partaking and partying, you know, on a level that could have stressed. It's it's the stress. It's this incredible stress that's placed on our youth. And so I was I was reading about it on ESPN and watching about it and trying to see what they were saying. And it's they're chalking it up to a myriad of factors. But I think it all, all boils down to something we talk a lot about on the show is the mental health connection, this that stress of of matching the expectations that are placed on you. You know, whether you're a child of legacy, whether you're a child who's just a, a standout child from sports from your high school team, whatever it is. It, there's this incredible there's too much stress that's interesting because i was listening to huberman and they were talking about mindset and how mindset um you know like when you raise your children the when you focus too much on success yes as opposed to effort it creates it creates an issue because you're always you know i can't uh, i i'll, I'll you know, ruin it. But but when you're looking towards always being the best and this most successful, and when you yeah. say to your kids, oh, you're the best, you're, oh, this is so great. You you did so well, instead of complimenting the effort, because yes. it, because it, you know, it's kind of like the Buddha saying, you know, it's the journey, not the destination, right? It's, it's getting there. It, and it always is getting there. Cause when you yeah, think, think back on the great times of your life, it's always been about, wow. Remember those years when we were building our business, building our life, right. together, building right. the, raising the kid, whatever those were the great, it, you know, it's never really about li the outcome. It's really about Pay, being present to the situation now and and mindset is about let's look at that let's look at the effort that you put into that let's yep. you know it's i don't know well, i'll tell you what i success if you're focused on success that's ego you're just focused on yeah. winning and then what does that mean that mean it, and, and that also it's so vapid it's so vapid yeah. it's going tomorrow you know i um but that that when I was reading about that this morning, I thought, oh, man, what are we doing? This is not anything new. This has been going on since our our parents were kids. This is yeah. a, beyond that. It's just pressure, pressure, pressure. And it doesn't seem. I don't feel as though it's getting lighter. It feels like there's even more of it. Now, I want to switch gears entirely because there's something else I want to talk to you about that just came okay. out. So really? one of the leading executives, um, I think her title is CEO of. Twitter now is now it's now known as X. They've they've lost the logo, they've lost the name, so now it's X. She came out and said that it will be run by AI. Now there's a lot of people doing somersaults in the air and and you know out of out of panic and out of joy. So there's people are flipping for different reasons. But you and I've had John Sane on the line on the show. We've had conversations about AI. You and I have, and I mean. We got it. We we've got to find some comfort levels with, yeah. with this because it's it's a part of our world, like it or not. 
Yep. And that's the thing. It's part of our world, like it or not, it's already here. Already You're either here. on the bandwagon, you either accept it. Here's what here's my thought about this. And I've thought a lot about it lately. Because it is, you know, as an actor, we've got, got an actor strike. We're worried yep. about AI coming in. Like, will there even be need for actors? And will I be even, will I be in a film and I won't even know that I was in the film, right? Right, right. But um, it's, my feeling is it's kind of like technology. It's like, it's up to you. It's about taking responsibility. It's about taking taking ownership of your life and saying, okay, I've got this amazing phone that does all these things. I've got a computer that can go anywhere and can do anything. And I've got an AI app that can write my whatever, write my papers for me. But at the same time, you've got to look at that and say, am I growing as a human being? Will I be a better human being by allowing this to take over my life? So I think it's just about having limits with it, you know, well, saying, okay, I'll be a part of this to a certain degree, but I also say no to it just at times in my life. I'm going to go out in nature. I'm not going to be a part of this that, you know, whatever. Well, I, I I mean, I, I don't know if that sounds like a solution, but it to me, it says, you know, for me, I turn my phone off at eight. It's just what I do, you know, unless I'm aware. Well, from- I, I'll tell you what, I, I think that we have to take it a step further with all due respect. I think that if you are an actor or a writer and your your union is striking and you're fighting against something, then and and if you learn that there's a possibility of taking an image of you and paying you for one day's work, but then using that for lifetime, they own the Im- the rights to your image for lifetime. And and you say, no, no, that's not acceptable to me. Then my encouragement is to align yourself with people who are willing to take the position that you take with whatever this is, technology, whatever it is, and and partner up with them and fight with them. Or if you say, you know what, I'm going to turn it off. I'm not going to deal with this. This cannot affect me. I've got other issues in my life that take precedence that I can't allow this to become a vice grip in my head. Okay, then take the stance and align yourself. But we... We know that we're pack animals. We know that we need to be together with people who not only not parrot us, but support us. So if you've discovered, let's say you're a young kid getting out of college and you say, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. What I thought I what four years ago when I began studying in college and I declared a major, this is what I wanted. Now I'm discovering it's not going to be there. Okay. Align yourself with people who can guide you and say, yeah, but this can never be taken by AI right. and this can never so or this can never be replaced by robotic use or whatever. So I think there's a lot of boot quaking, but it also comes down to everything we talk about. Um, fear of the unknown. Yeah. So it, the most important thing I think is to align yourselves and keep talking about it. Keep, keep talking, talking about, about it. it. I think, I, I'm not saying I'm, bu- I'm putting my head in the ground. I'm saying, yes, absolutely. Join the, your community and fight for what you believe is right and fair but also know that it's not going to go away but but then fight for the right to stay human i guess really it's just like i just want to stay human and 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 you know i think ai is kind of exciting and amazing i don't understand it i also know that it's got to stay a distance from me to a certain degree because like I don't get it. So funny, you know, so I, I'm laughing. I'm only I'm only snickering because um, Billy and I got an invitation to a birthday party um, just recently, and it was all AI generated. Uh, oh, these two people. And uh, I don't know the female, but I know the male is real. Um, and, but I'm looking, I'm, you know, I'm studying it came across my phone. And so I'm I'm opening it <laughs> to really look at it. And I can see that it was all AI generated and it. Yeah really i mean looks like he had on a breastplate he had you know <laughs> abs and pecs that not in real life so i started thinking man what if this were a dating app you know like ooh la la i am going out with but, but is it the same as a dating app anyway because because those dating apps i don't think anybody puts their proper well, everyone picture. can put a filter on but i'm talking about transformation that ain't well, it was like when i did that when i did that when the the ai thing came out and i did that thing and i was like a superhero and a fairy i mean it was fun to watch 
And I was, and I kind of, I kind of thought I could be those people. I don't know, <laughs> but I'm weird. <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to star in every one of those movies. <laughs> Started um, looking into how to oh, get elf in ears. Don't go away, everyone. You're listening to Outcomes of Sun Radio. We've got amazing guests, really sweet and wonderful and talented and smart woman, Michelle, Michelle Russell. But stay where you are. You're listening to Outcomes of Sun with Melissa Yamaguchi and myself, Mariel Hemingway. As a mental health advocate and author, I love books. Books have the capacity to inspire, educate, transform, and ultimately help readers all over the world. So if you want to publish your book or if you need help writing your story, I highly recommend Mindstir Media, rated the number one best book publisher around the country. Mindstir Media can help you no matter where you are in the book writing or publishing process. Go to mindstermedia.com to learn more and schedule a consultation. Hello, everybody. You're listening to Outcomes of Sun Radio podcast with my wonderful co-host, Melissa Yamaguchi. And we have such a great guest today. Uh, I, she's become a very close friend. Her name is Michelle Russell, and she is, gosh... Talk to me. <laughs> tell us what you did. I mean, tell us really how, I don't know, your journey is so extraordinary. Melissa, I can't wait to share this with you because her journey, like her own personal journey has led her to understanding mushrooms, mycelium, mm -hmm. um, and how they really can shift the way we deal with our lives, mm -hmm. how we can get through trauma and how we can kind of really heal body and body and brain gut and brain is really what i should say which you know the the gut as we've talked about on the show several yeah. times is the is is that place that's where the brain is so absolutely oh my gosh um talk to us talk to us a little bit like tell us a little bit about your story and what what led you to you know to mushrooms and and then psychedelics, maybe mushrooms first. I don't know which came first, the mushroom or the psychedelic, <laughs> the trauma. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The trauma came first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and um, I think what I have come to recognize recently through a lot of work is that a lot of my life was spent running from trauma uh, and I didn't recognize it as such. And right. so I've been through a lot of transitions in life uh, that have made quite an interesting story. And some of those involve, you know, really discovering the power of food and the power of the gut and the healing yeah. of the physical form. Uh, and so in my forties, I went through a crisis where I was a hundred pounds heavier than I am now. And I was taking, well, let me tell you something. She's so tiny. She's a tiny little person. I can't imagine a hundred pounds on her. It, anyway, keep going. It was really uncomfortable uh, more than anything else. Like I just felt bad all the time. I was tired and, and my body felt heavy, both, you know, physically and spiritually. I just had no connection to anything at that time, except 12 prescription medications and a couple bottles of wine, like daily, you know, right, that's, yeah. Yeah, uh, and, yeah that's a good American treatment diet. <laughs> that's, right. that's just oh, standard yeah. American diet. Yeah. <laughs> it's called sad for a reason. Uh, <laughs> and that's not even touching the food. <laughs> it's yeah. just the pharmaceuticals and the booze. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that was a real crisis in form at 40. And, uh, you know, plant-based food and a lot of lifestyle changes, the adoption of yoga practice and you know, uh, some, some removal of some, some toxic areas of my life made enough change that I could keep running <laughs> from that childhood trauma in another way. Right. So, so then I, uh, then I really, uh, continued down that path of just replacing one form of running with another. And so next I chose overwork. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I went straight from, you know, addiction to overwork and, uh, tried to kill myself working in a kitchen, building a company. And, and that's when I created, yeah. um, you know, really the way that Marianne and I know each other is she's bought some of my products and, you yeah. know, we we've crossed around on gut health uh, yeah. because I developed a 
cashew cheese line that's probiotic. It has 9 billion strains of lactobacilli per ounce, which wow. is your primary gut healing bacteria. And it's cultured and fermented. And so it has this wonderful, real flavor without being um, your standard American cheese, which is 71% saturated fat and the same as Vaseline. Like you just shouldn't eat that. Wow. <laughs> same as Vaseline? Did you say same as Vaseline? Yes. Holy heck. Wow. <laughs> Fancy cheese over and look at the saturated fat and put it's it down crazy oh, that's terrifying i never knew that i never even heard that before that's terrifying yeah. it is terrifying i was talking to uh you know one of the neatest things about this part of my life is i have a lot of really artistic amazing friends and i was talking to another author giacomo hakatana and about his book sandstone and he was saying that you know he thinks that all of this has been kind of just you know, something that we didn't know that we should yeah. know, you know, these connections between the gut and the brain that we, we should know. And it feels like it's like a, I don't want to say conspiracy theory, but it feels like that information should be more readily available to people. Absolutely. Well, I, th I think, I think there's a real marketing value and bottom line um, focus, uh, the more ignorant the consumer is. So if we're, if we don't know, then we just blindly move along and we feed our kids McDonald's because we're on vacation and it's easy and we grab the cheese sticks and the salami and crackers because that's what the charcuterie boards are supposed to look like whatever it is it just keeps it keeps perpetuating so yeah I think there's a level of ignorance that serves the bottom line for sure yeah I, I think that does happen and and it's tragic in our forms because yeah. our bodies just can't handle the things that we're feeding ourselves. So, and not to mention, how about our environments attacking us at the same time? Yeah. So not only are you putting in, ingesting food that's not really food, our environment's got all this stuff floating around. So we're really at a loss. And, you know, it was interesting. We were talking the other day and we were talking about like, cause you've, tra she's traveled. Melissa, you guys would have so much in common because she really was an educator. She she traveled the world teaching, educa teaching you know, teaching in schools like you, yeah. like your mother and 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 what have you. But, you know, going to Europe, like the difference, like we go to Europe and you eat bread and it's not a problem. You eat pasta. It's not right. a problem. But there's no glyphosate, right? It's they're not illegal. using. It's well, there wasn't. There wasn't. Yeah. There's well, slowly well, there shifts that are starting to happen. There are slow shifts, but it's not as bad. No, it's not nearly as bad. But no. you know, it's like. And did that lead you to kind of finding what? What? what how do you stumble upon this whole mushroom situation? Well, so <laughs> as I was as I was changing my life yeah. and eating different things and replacing some toxic substances with plants. Yeah. Uh, what I came to understand is, you know, I wanted to find a really sustainable protein source. Uh, right now, 76 or something like that percent of our land is used to uh, grow grains to feed agricultural animals. Right. And yet we can't feed the people in the world. And, right. and, and so what could be more sustainable than fungi, which can be grown without light, water, or air, very little resources, abundantly in a cycle of every two weeks, you have new growth. Like this is an amazing food source that can feed, you know, potentially all 8 billion of us. We need alternative sources of food, nourishment, and protein. And mushrooms have so much to offer in that arena. They have all of the nine branch chain amino acids. Wow. They, they offer the polysaccharides, they're cancer fighting, they're immune boosting, they're brain boosting. Like what led me to them was them. The appeal was so strong. I was like, this is a solution. This is something we need. Absolutely. They're, they're asking us to allow that help to make our forms stronger to to help us improve our opportunity yeah. to evolve in a healthier way absolutely and and i and mushrooms i mean they've been around as long as hum, humankind correct absolutely this is, this is like they found them on yeah some of the oldest remains on the matterhorn he had a little agaricon pouch with him you know like wow. potent mushrooms like they, <laughs> they have co-evolved with us yeah for sure well, 
there's that psilocybin hypothesis, right? That we evolved from Homo, Homo erectus to Homo sapiens because of the addition of the psilocybin mushroom into the human diet, because yeah, of that called, cognitive connection. It's called the stoned ape theory. And, and yeah. exactly as Melissa said, there was this gigantic period of growth where the brain nearly quadrupled in size that, mm -hmm. you know, is not explained uh, in what? any of the existing literature. And this theory really addresses that possibility. Yeah. And we know that animals use these substances when they're hunting and that it helps them be better hunters. And it makes sense that these mushrooms have evolved with us. Wow. So it, it creates more clarity for like for animal for well, well one I guess thing that is a side effect of that is the peripheral vision uh, oh, for animals that. hunting. That's fascinating. I never, I never even heard that. I never knew that. I know that, you know, the, the, the latest, it's, I don't want to say it's the latest rage because it's been around for quite some time. The treatment of the use of psilocybin mushrooms and working with people and treating uh, anxiety, OCD, um, yeah. depression, it's and then so on. And I think what, I think what we as, as an American culture are still reeling from the Haight Ashbury Woodstock era when we don't really understand. And so we've got these notions um, that it's that's psychedelic that's going to take you out of this world. And then the, your yes. parents are going to be able to tether you back in to, to, uh, to land. So can you shed some fear busting light yeah. on that? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to share what I have researched and what I understand. Uh, and I do think uh, that we have to be careful right now. It's it's a time when there is a lot of promise uh, in this in 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 this possible way to treat so many things, as you mentioned, Melissa, and many more that are being studied. You know, we're there was an amazing study that just came out. Uh, talking about some possible links with psilocybin and the microbiome for help with autoimmune like they, there are we're just barely touching the surface of this but we also have to be very very careful not to see it as a panacea right. uh, you cannot fix things alone right like we have to responsibly do the work ourselves as individuals so i like, can't just hand my husband a bouquet of mushrooms when we have an argument okay got it <laughs> You can, and he may laugh, and that might help, but, you know, uh, but really, I think what happened, uh, as you mentioned, at the Haight-Ashbury era was there was a lot of excitement then, but there was also a lot of civil unrest, and, you know, uh, it was seen as very dangerous to oppose the things that were happening in the world, you know, yeah. uh, somebody who has changed the way that they think in their programming is not likely to go to war, and, you know, that. that <laughs> That's right. not that that was not desirable at the time. So there was a really big backlash right. against. And there was, I think, you know, it could have been done a lot differently. And what I'm hoping to encourage now is that we we be careful and that we make sure that we're educated and that we work yeah. with responsible practitioners and that we we help uh to provide the scientific information so that we don't lose this opportunity again right. to to address what is a mental health crisis in this country absolutely i got emotional about that but mario and no, I it's know, so like the the mental health in this country is at crisis level absolutely absolutely and, and i these think are, and these are natural solutions you know these are solutions i mean not uh, you know, it may not be your solution, but it's an it, option. It's, it's, a, it's certainly it's an, an option. option. Yeah. Yeah. It, it certainly is an option. I mean, they're seeing, they're doing studies with, you know, people in the arm, you know, veterans, they're doing it with PTSD, with all kinds of, you know, our friend Chase Hughes, he's a, he's a proponent of this, but you, and you do have to walk a, a, a very fine right. line be very careful because what happens is it also becomes a trend and then you get like oh it's hip and cool and you know blah 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 and then somebody goes out and does something you know stupid basically and and then the entire the the entire program goes down okay. because somebody hasn't used yeah. their their common sense. It's that whole recess theory, right? When you're a kid, you're all getting ready to go out and to have recess and then one kid throws a spitball and everybody loses recess. <laughs> like who threw the spitball so it's it's but i know from what i've read 
that it fosters this greater connection between different regions of the brain. And so I can only imagine the brain of your microbiome, the brain of your heart, uh, you're being able to feel emotions, every single aspect of your body. And I think that a lot there, my question to you is my honest, earnest question to you is, must someone have notions of trauma, PTSD, depression, o- OCD, addiction, in order to try this? Is there is there a reason to venture into the field of this if you don't believe you're suffering? Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I think that's quite an interesting question, Melissa. And when we say venture into the field, there are different things within that field, right? The, there is a, a movement afoot for microdosing, which is the idea that one would take a very small fraction of a larger dose on a daily basis or a few days on, a few days off. There's many different protocols that people can look at for that uh, in order to, to help maintain a regular sense of well-being, uh, to create a little space and time in the form, uh, you know, to provide a little support. Um, that That is one way that one might enter that space and engagement. And I think most people can benefit from, you know, some support. Is it appropriate for all? I think these are decisions they have to have education around and, and think very carefully about with people that they trust in this area. Yes. Uh, you're also talking about a larger experience, like what's called a therapeutic dose, which is what's being studied at our best universities. John Hopkins has some amazing studies going on. Harvard has some amazing studies going on that are so exciting, uh, showing great efficacy in this treatment. And so mm-hmm. you could also be looking at a larger experience to try to break some kind of pattern in your mind, or you know, you could break the taboos, the fears yeah, also that come I, up. I think really it, it, it's a great way to allow your thinking to, to perhaps find different pathways, to, to really connect in different ways in your mind and to knit new dendritic spines. And, and I think that uh, it's showing to be a very positive serotonin experience. It yes. floods the 2A receptors. Um, there's some really neat science out uh, that I've been listening to on uh, Huberman's podcast. Yep. Uh, he's got some great resources. If yep. you want to see what it's doing serotogenetically, that's a fun word to say. <laughs> uh, if you want to see what it's doing, there, I think that says it's pretty appropriate in a lot of situations. Well, and I think it's really, you know, I think as human beings that are curious and intelligent, you look, you look for the Hubermans, the scientists, the people that are out of coming out of Harvard, yeah. that are, you know, like we look to those people to say, oh, this is actually okay. I mean, even Michael Pollan, who comes out with the book, yes. you know, how to change your brain. Yeah. It's like, he gives us permission to go, Okay, I'm going to I'm going to take a look at that, right? Yep. And I think it's it's legitimate and it sh- it probably shouldn't be as be that frightening. I know for me, I mean, you brought up the very thing that, you know, my sister was at ha- ha- Ashbury and, you know, hanging out with the Grateful Dead and doing gosh knows what in the in the whole, you know, psychedelic world, but back when it was it was like the wild, wild west, right? Right. And now I think we're coming into this place where it will, it will come into shape. And I think the, it's kind of like good things do, do find their way, but sometimes they, they come up against challenges in order to get there. I think that's what happens. You know, I have an, uh, an honest question. Yeah. Do you know, are you aware of any studies or information on how those who have been diagnosed or are recognized on the spectrum of Asperger's or autism, how they are affected by the treatment of psilocybin? That's an amazing question. Uh, I did, uh, I'll, I'll make sure that Mariel has this guy's name. I did find a, uh, I was doing some research on this very topic. I found a fella who is a psychedelic guide who also is um, neurodivergent. Yes. And so he'd be a really interesting person to talk to I'd about love that. that particular yeah. question. But also, um, if you look at brain scans, um, kind of what is different about a neurodivergent brain is that different uh, different areas are lit up. 
different areas are communicating right. than someone who's not neurodivergent. Right. And so what we see with psilocybin is similar. Different areas of the brain are being lit up. And so I think it's an area that merits a great deal more study. And yeah. I think this, uh, this young man's first name was Aaron. And I think he'd be an awesome person to talk to. And I'll, I'll get his contact. That would yeah. be fascinating. I have some friends who um, have family members who have some trauma. And I made the, I mean, the layman's suggestion that maybe you should look into this approach. And so my fam my friend's family member did and then came back and said, oh, they were told absolutely not because um, trauma has a way of repeating itself in the thought processes. And so being able to break that thought process is, is too difficult. And I thought there's gotta be someone with far greater knowledge on this than- Absolutely. I don't, I, it's not that I don't trust, I don't think, I always think there's more than one answer. So if you tell me that it has to be done this way, I'd like to have two and three more opinions before I can come up with a conclusion on something. So I appreciate, I think it'd be great if we had Aaron on. Yeah. yeah. And I think uh, your point is well taken, Melissa. And I, I, when I was a teacher, one of the things that I really wanted all people to do is like, at least get another opinion, check some other yes. sources, right? Like, yes. you know, do some research. It's your life, you know, like, yeah, really yeah. take some personal responsibility and like making sure that you've done your homework. Absolutely. I mean, you know, one of the things that Melissa and I talk about often, because this is connected to the Mariel Hemingway Foundation, which is really about mental health, is the first number one thing is to take responsibility. And that mean, and that doesn't mean you don't need help. It just means, come on, dig in, find out what works for you, find out where, you know, find out what that trauma is and, yeah. and what might you feel comfortable and safe in dealing with it, right? And that's, that's, right. that's different for many people. I want to take this in a slightly different direction because I know that you have so many things. I mean, you make cheese, you do all these incredible things, but you also have a, a new company called Bardo? Bardo Botanicals. Bardo, Bardo Botanicals. And you will be coming out with a non-psychoactive, mm -hmm. you know, so it is not psychoactive, but it is filled with mushrooms, yes. right? And, yes. and these benefit the brain just, well, maybe not as intensely at one time, but over time, there it's very effective to the brain and also the gut. So tell us a little bit about the botanicals and your your scientist, who sounds absolutely fascinating. Oh, amazing. Yeah, I work with a, a good friend of mine. His name is Dean Fors, and uh, he's our scientist in Oregon. And uh, we've created a line of uh, functional vinegar products. So they're fermented and they taste delicious. Wow. Yeah, they, they really do. They offer all the benefits benefits of the most medicinal mushrooms. And so we know that lion's mane, uh, studies have shown that it can help us prevent cognitive decline. Yep. It, it has some efficacy against Alzheimer's and dementia. It, it, it can create on its own new neural pathways in the brain. Neur neurogenesis. Like it's amazing. It, mushroom can make yeah. you smarter. Like why, why <laughs> would you not do that? A right? fun guy and a smart guy. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Yeah. And so uh, we combine that with other botanicals and herbs that really create a stacking effect and, and a real sense of well-being in the form. And this is a nice way to enter the arena of fungi and, and you know, fortify your immune system, strengthen your DNA, your brain, you know, ensure that you can have cognition as we age. Like, I, I want to know what I'm I'm doing. I got all yeah. these great I, I want to keep them. You know? <laughs> right. Absolutely. It's so true. It's yeah. so true. We don't want to lose our amazing ability to think and, and, and create. I mean, Melissa, you and I are just like, we feel like we're on the beginning. Like how, how can we possibly like turn back? Like how we, we want to turn back time in a way in your brain, but you know, and we talk about this a lot. It's like, learn new things, but how do you activate the brain so that it is receptive to learning yeah. things? Well, right? and, and how do you maintain it? How do you maintain yeah. it? You know, so you yeah. can be, you can be gung ho and then peter out in five minutes. Hey, what right. was it? Right. And get tired <laughs> of it. Right. So it's about maintaining that. Cause you know, I remember when I remember being in school and learning new languages 
and I couldn't wait till I got to the next thing where I could completely converse. My daughter's learning languages. My son learns them. After five minutes, I'm like, "Come and say, I'm, I, that's enough." And I, you know, because I, I can't, I can't sustain it, right? So I think strengthening the brain, our muscle, to carry it, to carry us, to carry us is is just as vital as. Vital seems to be my favorite word. When I look back at our old shows, I say vital far too much. I'm going to come up with a different word here. I took Latin. I should know something. But it is such an in, incredibly important component. We talk about keeping the arms strong so we can push ourselves up, so our thighs, our legs strong so we can walk, keep our brains and our hearts and our guts strong so that we can it can carry, these bodies can carry us onto old age. Well, and the thing is, and we talked about this too, and you and I talk about this, the brain and the body are connected. Yeah, that's so right. it's not disconnect this brain is so much a part of what's going on everywhere in the body and you, i think you think about acupuncture you think about you know the all the meridians of the body and you know when you think about uh, acupuncture and the feet mm -hmm. and how many like yeah. that's why you know connecting in the earth and when you're yeah. earthing and touching the ground and activating all those little points all of these things work together and it comes back to mycelia it yeah. comes back to the earth and we were walking the other day and i was like i have so much love for nature but i look at trees and you know i was sitting under a tree today <laughs> hello i was sitting under a tree and it was the wind was blowing like crazy and it was just so incredibly powerful to realize that the all of these things are interconnected and the oh, yeah. more we have an understanding of the plant world and the you know, and, and nature and ourselves and the brain and how we are inter interconnected from a scientific standpoint. It's not woo -woo Absolutely. stuff. They're starting to discover that these things are real. And then the energetic component, okay, I just, yeah. you know, I went to the moon. You, know, she said, you, she said. <laughs> you, have, you have tapped into something that I, I watched on the how to change your mind. On, on yeah, Netflix, the show. and one of the things one of the questions that were asked of every single person who who had experienced the use of the psilocybin and the, and the treatment with with a responsible clinician this is very important a responsible guide all of them said they've had a sense of oneness this overwhelming sense that it's not just me here me mine 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 but it's us we all of us the yeah. trees the earth the sky, the birds, we, each other, wherever yes. we are. And it was this overwhelming sense of this connectedness that I think sometimes, you know, it's easier to divide and conquer. And so if we are in silos with our political views, our religious views, our take on food with your keto, paleo, vegan, whatever it is, whatever these differences are that are highlighted, you know, it's easier, it's easier to kind of control the inmates. Oh, <laughs> damn what you said, girl. That is it. That it is, is it. It absolutely it. is. Mary and I were talking about this the other night. We think that it's time that, and part of what I'm trying to do in my book and part of what I found in Mariel's book is there's so many commonalities in our stories. Yeah we are all going through this experience and there's lots of it that's not good right and in that there is these universal truths that have been kind of swept away and forgotten uh because we're so divided right, right. but right. there are still things that are true for yes. all of us absolutely and, i mean you know we were talking about it and i was like oh my god your story your story right but when i speak in front of people and i've told you this a million times melissa and you probably because she does a lot of speaking as well you tell your story and all you know and people in the audience are like oh my god your story is just like mine and yep. it's not like theirs right? right i mean the facts are not the same it's the feeling that's it's right. that sense of oh my god i went through the same feeling of fear yes. or whatever it was shame, right. shame whatever hurt. yeah hurt and and then you don't feel alone right and then th then when you don't feel alone then you feel this connection and then it just seems it just seems like that you know having the ability to do a a you know, kind of a, a journey with mushrooms might be that thing that says, 
that gives you that confirmation that we are connected. And I think it's hard for people to, to see that. And I think that's why, you know, with our religions, we're so, it's like we pray and pray because we want to feel connected. We just want to feel like we're not alone. Right. I think that's, that's one of the, we're pack animals. We're pack animals. We're exactly. meant to be in a, in a pack. We're meant to I hang know. out. Listen, you, you, you're you solo too long. You turn into the Unabomber. I don't trust any of it. <laughs> such a nut. Oh my gosh. This is such a fun conversation. Oh, you're going to come back. Yes. Because she's writing an amazing book about her story, which I just kept going. <laughs> we were walking the other day and I was like, you know what? I have a feeling that there's going to be any experience that I'm going to come up against or come across or somebody's going to mention and I'm going to wonder about it and I'm going to call you because I know that you have actually had that trauma in your <laughs> life. I mean, like the stories. Anyway, wait for the book. It's coming and we'll talk to you again. But yeah. thank you so much for being Thank you so much for coming. Oh, it's right. just the tip of the iceberg. Just yeah, the tip I know. of the iceberg. Absolutely. I can't yeah. wait till we're able and, and and the world kind of really embraces it as as something that's really viable and important. So anyway, don't go anywhere because when you come back, you're going to hear an energy tip from my friend, Melissa Yamaguchi. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Scott Mills, and you are listening to Outcomes the Sun Radio with the phenomenal Melissa Yamaguchi and, of course, the brilliant Meryl Hemingway. I am so excited to be here to talk about brains, about super resilience, and about all things that will make you decrease anxiety and live a better life. I look forward to seeing you on my website at www.scottwmills.com. We'll look forward to seeing you soon. Welcome back to Outcomes of Sud podcast, radio, whatever else it could be, possibly, with Meryl Hemingway and me, Melissa Yamaguchi. So we just had an amazing conversation about mushrooms. And I would like to share with you feng shui information about mushrooms. Who knew? I knew. Okay, so mushrooms in feng shui represent wealth and a long, healthy life, which, if you think about it, is interchangeable. In order to have, I mean, if you have wealth in your health, then you will have a long life, right? So you hear people often say, it, once, if you become sick, then nothing else matters. doesn't matter how much you have in the bank. Because if you become sick, it takes down the quality of your life. Well, mushrooms are a vital part of that. They're also known as earth energy. So in the center of your home, in the southwest area of your home, in the northeast area of your home, in that little diet, that little cross section of energy there, all of those directions in feng shui represent earth energy. And so if you were to have some earth, mushroom designs, mushroom decor, uh, mushroom color even that really pretty kind of a I don't like the word putty but it is kind of a putty right kind of a putty color tanny brown color the southwest center of your home and the northeast are incredibly good for supporting that color and that energy and also that motif mushroom pillows whatever and it's also known in feng shui that if you are to find wild mushrooms springing up in your yard in your garden that is a sign that good news is coming. There's a, a thought process in feng shui that we cannot be separated from one another. That really hails back to the original Taoist idea that we're all connected. And so given the, the information that we were just we just learned about the connectedness of how we're all one, it only, it only serves to prove that we would have that information, that mushrooms springing up, we're connected to it and it's good energy coming our way. However, that energy lands is to be defined by you, but it means keep your eyes open, keep your heart open, and according to what we're learning about microbiome, keep your gut open as well. So thank you for that. That's our energy tip for the day, and don't go too far. Coming up next is Meryl Hemingway to share with you about health and balance. Hello, everybody. You're listening to Outcomes of Sun Radio, and I'm Meryl Hemingway. Thank you for that amazing tip, Melissa. I will. I just want to talk talk about since we, this whole thing has been about mushrooms anyway i want to talk about coffee in the morning because i love coffee i'm sorry um not everybody does my partner bobby thinks that coffee is like a poison and i think it's really good so i just want to talk about coffee a little bit because 
coffee is great. And for some people, it really does work well for them. But I got to tell you a few things that I think are super important when it comes to coffee. You must, if you drink coffee, you must drink organic coffee as much as possible because there is so there are so many pesticides sprayed on coffee throughout the world and i it, I, it just it's a shame but th that's just the reality of it so you really want to go with organic coffee uh because you won't have th that's number one number two try to find a, a coffee that is low acid I've, I, I tried different ones. I really like a, a coffee called Timon's coffee. Uh, it's a low acid coffee. And then I put a, another kind of coffee. I mix it with another kind of coffee that says happy gut that apparently has probiotics in it. I don't know if it really does, but it's an organic coffee that apparently has probiotics in it. And then the other thing, since we're talking about mushrooms today, there's, there's um, a combination there's different companies that do it. There's a, a company called Life Cell Myco, and they they call it Myco Fuel, and it's and it's uh, a combination of chaga, cordyceps, reishi, lion's mane, and turmeric. And when you put that in your coffee, it really, it's just it's good. You're you're getting like all the benefits of of that kind of mushroom thing for the gut, for the brain, for anti-inflammation. That would be the turmeric. Anyway, I just think it's really important to, I think it's important to drink coffee. No, I don't think it's important to drink coffee, but I think it's important to make your coffee the best it can possibly be when possible. I know when you go to the airport, you just don't have any other choices besides Starbucks or whatever else. And I, I really don't know anything about their beans. I'm sure they're perfectly great, but um, w when at home, buy organic coffee it really makes it makes a difference to your health because you just don't want pesticides in your body we're so inundated with with glyphosate like we talked about in the show where with pesticides with you know all kinds of sprays we've got environmental things going on that we're probably really unaware of so when you can make organic choices it's really good for you and coffee happens to be one of the great rituals of life. It smells terrific. It's so much fun. I love my coffee in the morning. So enjoy your coffee, but think about doing it kind of in a different way. <laughs> anyway. Well, I like coffee. So I'm uh, right there with you. Uh, yeah. I just think it's important. I think that we don't, we don't, you know, it's uh, with food, with everything. It's like, it, just chew you know, I get it. I get that it's expensive. Sometimes you think, oh, but organic's expensive. But then ask yourself, do you go to Starbucks a million, you know, three or five times? Any of the drive-through coffees. Any yeah, of the drive-through and they're coffees. it's yeah. hugely expensive. So it's like you have to monitor these things, right? You have to say, well, I guess I could take away from here where I'm wasting money or you know what I mean? And, and well, go no, listen, a, a bag of coffee style. is what, at, at what? How, at the very most, how much would it be? And then you've got a smaller bag of coffee that you've got to grind yourself. And yeah. then you take the average cup of a drive through coffee. I don't care wh which which place yeah. it's from is on average like two thirty nine, two forty. So forty. Sometimes you know. Sometimes it's five. No, but on average, like oh, about oh, two forty. Right, okay. So then if you right. if you take that and just put it a cup a day, your your bag's not going to cost that much, your, cup, your exactly. little bag of coffee. So exactly. just prorating it out and determining how much of this time you're willing to spend on you instead of convenience. Absolutely. And, and, and the ritual of doing it in the morning. I mean, for me, you know, like I love right now, I, I change it up all the time. But right now I'm into my, you know, like my Chemex and it's in glass and I put the, you know, I put yep. the paper in and then it's the I slow slow pour and, yeah and there's something beautiful about that i mean you told me a story about your friend from japan and he was so excited because you had spent like well, i don't know a few minutes to make him a really nice cup of coffee and he yeah. was just so thrilled because apparently he wasn't getting the best coffee at home he was like melissa a proper cup of coffee <laughs> like really <laughs> yes it is rather proper when i serve it this way
<laughs> anyway, thank you for an amazing show. What what oh, yeah, a really good. So I, I yeah, Michelle's a really very special person, and I, I was I was glad to be able to share her with everybody. And well, I can't wait for her book to come out. I'm like a, I'm at the edge of my seat. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Thank you all for listening. You're listening to Outcomes the Sun. And don't forget that it's always connected to the Mariel Hemingway Foundation.org, which is really about being a resource navigator so that you can find solutions for your mental health problems or for somebody that you love. And that's what we aim to do is just figure out the all the different solutions that are out there, no matter where you are, but we need your help. Uh, so your donations go towards trying to get that app in place and, you know, create that. Um, and we're new, but we're mighty and we're going to keep going. And by the way, we have a big announcement. I know I said it last time, but it really is. There's a big announcement coming. So just hang in there because it's coming. Hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.